How does fluid flow around a cylinder? A simple enough question, but one that cannot be answered without some extra information. The flow profile depends on the size of the cylinder, on the inflow velocity, and on the thickness, or viscosity, of the fluid. In fact, these three properties combine to form the Reynolds number, and it is only this Reynolds number that then dictates the behavior of the flow. For a very small Reynolds number, the flow remains fully attached, and in the limit to zero, the profile becomes fully symmetric. Past a Reynolds number of around four, the flow detaches from the back of the cylinder, and a small separation bubble is formed. The size of the separation bubble increases with the Reynolds number. Take a look at the more detailed information on the web post of Figure 42 on albumofcfm.com for the precise dependency of the size of the separation bubble on the Reynolds number. There you will also find how all the simulation results shown in this video were obtained. The separation bubble keeps on growing until it is larger than the diameter of the cylinder itself. Of course, it cannot grow indefinitely, and at some point the system becomes unstable. Past a Reynolds number of 46, vortex shedding begins to occur. The separation bubbles no longer stick to the back of the cylinder, but are instead dragged into the surrounding fluid. When we zoom out, we see that these isolated vortices are transported far beyond the cylinder. This resulting pattern is called the von Karman vortex street, a well-known phenomenon that is also observed in clouds passing mountains or ocean currents around islands. At around a Reynolds number of 1,000, the flow loses all stability and the wake becomes turbulent, a topic for a different video.